thing for everybody. So, so yeah, for everybody starting a clean slate and just to work hard, just get out there, it's going to be fun. Yeah, I would say um, it's, it's, it's going to be good for us. I mean, in the Big 12, you have teams that you see all the time. And, um, they're scouting you really well. You're scouting them really well. And you come here and you know, have a few days to prepare. So I feel like that will help us. Brian Brinkley, KFOR TV, Christian Doolittle. Um, the ups and downs of this season, you talked a couple times about how if you don't come out with that energy as a team, it usually doesn't work out well for you guys. What do you think can be, make the difference here in the NCAA tournament with that? You know, just, just realizing we have another uh, opportunity to get better, um, be able to play against somebody new, as uh, Brady just mentioned. Um, you know, we've, we've put a lot of work coming into this game, uh, game planning really well uh, for Ole Miss. Um, and just getting a new mindset of uh, this could be our last game. So um, just that added, um, you know, pressure uh, is going to bring out the best of us. Yeah, for Christian James, uh, when you look back at your career, you go you go back a long way. You played in a, an Elite Eight game, scored 10 points in an Elite Eight game, and it's been a long journey. What, just reflect back on your career, especially from an NCAA tournament standpoint, and just how long ago that might seem. Um, I'd say it's, um, it's very important, you know, looking back, playing throughout the four years in the tournament, um, it's a blessing, you know, it's, it's a, it's, a, it's a very serious thing. You know, we want to go out here and, uh, and we want to make a statement. You know, um, we have to, we know we have to play together. We have to bring energy and effort. And um, every possession is key. You know, every every possession could be a game winner. All it takes is one play to turn the game around. And we know we have to, um, we have to be clicking on all cylinders. And, you know, we just have to come out here and prove a point. You know, we, we don't want to take any anything for granted. And uh, we're, just, we're just happy to get a lot, another opportunity to play. You're on the on the left side. Parrish Alford, Daily Journal, Tupelo, Mississippi. Jamal, what are your impressions of Ole Miss, specifically their backcourt? Uh, they have really good guard play. Uh, those three guards that started for them are very talented, and they can all score. So we just gonna have to take on the challenge as guards and just play good D on them and just do our, do what we do. us with the Mississippi Clarion Ledger to Christian Doolittle. Fr from your perspective in the in the down low, what do you see from Ole Miss's bigs and what can you do to maybe exploit some of their size disadvantages? Um, they're very versatile. Um, you know, they, uh, there's two starting bigs are a little bit different than their, than their uh, backups as well. Um, you know, being able to shoot the 15 foot jump shot, even stretching out to the three point line. So, you know, uh, the rotations on defense will have to be, you know, precise, um, knowing knowing our role and um, knowing the rotations as well as that. On offense, on our offensive side of the ball, you know, um, using our mobility to our advantage um, across the board, um, getting them in switches that they probably wouldn't want to get into. So, um, ball movement will be key. Here on this side, or left side, please. My left. Pete Yacobelli, Associated Press. Uh, for Christian Doolittle, you know, millions of people throughout the country today are going to be turning on, watching all these games. You guys have a right, uh, have a walk, have a uh, practice and things like that. Will you find yourselves staying up late, watching games, <laughs> seeing what's going on, or is the preparation for tomorrow uh, all encompassing for you guys? No, nah, we. I'm gonna go to sleep tonight. I mean, we play at <laughs> twelve thirty, so can't be up too late. Um, Cause we're gonna have an early breakfast tomorrow. But um, you know, as far as a lot of people watching these games, um, some people go the whole year without watching basketball, and then you know, tune in for March Madness. Um, it's you know, it's an honor to be here to be able to under this be under this spotlight um, that this tournament creates. So uh, we're all gonna wanna uh, go play our best. In the middle. For Christian James, uh, they got a veteran backcourt. You guys have experience in the backcourt. Talk about the challenge of that as a senior, and then as you look back when you were a freshman in the Final Four, what that was like being inexperienced in, in big NCAA tournament games. Um, well, they have a great backcourt. We know they can. We know they can score the ball well. Um, they move the ball well. Um, just looking back, um, 
an experience on on how Buddy Buddy Hill and all those guys made plays on the backcourt. Um, it's just it's just a thing of moving ball and making shots. You know, making shots is key to um, to the to this to, to this tournament. So um, that's that's the thing. We have to play together on offense, um, get stops on defense, move the ball, and make shots. Yeah, Brady, sort of a off the wall question. You got your you got your hair cut there midway through the season. <laughs> did you di since you've done that, is it just feel better? Is it is it a superstition? Were you just trying to change up the vibe? What how's it gone for you? <laughs> well, Going back to your look from last year. I really don't know what, what I was doing. Um I um just decided to grow my hair out last year. I never done it and everybody made a big deal out of it, so I kept it. And then I got to the point where I couldn't stand it anymore, so I just started. I just buzzed it off, and I, I love it. Buzz cuts where I'm at. So. Back in the middle, and just a uh, reminder to identify your agent, the outlet that you represent. Back to Brady. Did you get tired of hearing about all the Larry Bird comparisons? And <laughs> have, since you've shaved it, as the, have those kind of gone away? Yeah, they. Uh, I, I think they're pretty much done. Um, I mean, it was it was cool. I mean, I got a lot of attention from it. Uh, a lot of the guys all got a lot of attention from it. Me and Christian made one of the best commercials ever, and um, I mean, it, it was fun. And um, I'm glad I got the buzz cut back. Feel more like myself. All for Daily Journal, Tupelo, Mississippi. Brady, for those of us uh, not aware of that commercial, tell us about it, please. I mean, it was a it was a remake of the uh, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, uh, McDonald's commercial. So I mean, me and Christian uh, basically remade it, and uh, it was pretty good. Um, I mean, we <laughs> went, we were up in the rafters and uh, at, at the football stadium. I mean, just just some funny stuff. Anything else for the student athletes? Thank you, guys.
Now with us is Oklahoma head coach Lon Kruger. Coach, if you can make a o- brief opening statement, and then we'll open to questions. Yeah, it's a great time of year. Uh, uh, super excited for these guys to, to be here and have the opportunity to play in the tournament. Uh, every team has uh, that as a goal when they start the season. And these guys really a uh, lo- lot of ups and downs during the year, a little bit of a roller coaster ride. But finished probably uh, last month playing uh, a lot better than we did uh, middle third of the conference season. Uh, very good non-conference uh, slate. And again, uh, a lot of respect for Ole Miss and how tough that will be tomorrow. But uh, looking forward to seeing the guys play. In the front. Coach Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. I'm curious if you could go back to Matt Freeman's recruitment. Uh, what stood out about him that, that attracted you? And he told me that he got an offer after a, a, a tournament in Las Vegas where he didn't think he played particularly well. So what do you recall about that? Yeah, we actually had uh, one of those uh, rare cases where you get video on a lot of players. And we got Matt's video and uh, just uh, as he sent, I'm sure, to a lot of people. And uh, just liked his actions, liked his mobility, liked his ability to shoot the basketball. Uh, uh, again, that's on video. And then we watched him in Vegas. Uh, we you know, reaffirmed a lot of things. Uh, and he's done a good job. Uh, been a little bit streaky shooting the basketball, but uh, always works extremely hard. Great attitude. Uh, good teammate. Uh, all those things that you're looking for. Here in the middle. Go to the middle, and then we'll come to this outside. Brian Brinkley, KFOR-TV. Coach, uh, is it refreshing to face a team that's not in the Big 12. <laughs> you did so well in non-conference, and do you get the feeling the players are excited about playing somebody who doesn't know as much about them? Well, the players are definitely excited about playing. Uh, I don't know for that reason necessarily, but, yeah, the Big 12 is a grind. It's tough, like a lot of leagues in the country. Uh, you know, the top few in the, in the Big 12 are, are hard to beat, and uh, we, uh, we struggled with that at times. But uh, playing against someone that uh, – we don't know quite as well. They don't know us quite as well. It's part of the NCAA tournament experience, and uh, yeah, a lot of respect for Ole Miss and how well they score the ball. And and uh, Coach Davis's team's always very sound defensively, so we know how tough that'll be. But I know our guys are looking forward to it. Parrish Alford, Daily Journal, Tupelo, Mississippi. Coach, can you talk specifically just about what you have learned about Ole Miss back court, front court uh, this week? Obviously, their uh, three leading scorers are their perimeter guys. Uh, all three can really score the ball in a lot of different ways. Uh, all can make plays off the dribble for each other. They all shoot it well, uh, get to the paint. Uh, their big guys uh, can score a little, you know, look like they're a little more comfortable pick and pop, but they all can score inside. So, uh, again, uh, play about eight people. Uh, guys off the bench bring great energy and, uh, and a little bit more versatility. So, uh, uh, they're good. Uh, again, like I say, very sound defensively, push the ball offensively, uh, create opportunities for each other. Nick Suss, Mississippi Clarion Ledger. Lon, I'm just curious, how familiar are you with Kermit Davis and the style of basketball he plays? And also, what's the challenge that the way they switch defenses presents? Anytime a team switches, uh, you got to be a little bit you know, concerned about rhythm, you know, getting into the flow of things. And they do a good job with that. I've, I've followed, uh, known Kermit for a long time and followed his teams for a long time and always a lot of respect for how they played. They play the game right. They space the floor well. They move the ball well. They uh, are always very sound defensively, so he always does a great job. Here in the middle. Barry Trammell with the Oklahoma. We haven't talked to you in 46 hours. Yeah. Can you give us an update on <laughs> McNeese and just how he's looked in, since, since you got here? He's looked good, actually. Um, uh, didn't practice on Monday. Uh, practiced full speed uh, uh, yesterday for the first time. Uh, he'll be out there today. Uh, uh, we'll see how he feels coming off of that full speed day yesterday. Uh, but, again, it's been a long time. I mean, he was playing so well in November, you know, prior to the ankle and, and foot problem. And every time he's tried to get back, he just hadn't been able to quite get back into the flow before he injured it again. So uh, he's a guy that uh, needs, uh, you know, athleticism, you know, running the floor, mobility is a big part of his game, and he just hadn't had that. So he hadn't been able to be as productive, even though he has played some. He hasn't uh, been as comfortable as he was in in November. Well, you know, we equated your your slide sort of to the start of conference play. How much was it related to just McNeese? Because when he got hurt, it's sort of when you started playing not as well. How much? Are those two are those two things related? Oh, for sure, to some degree, no question. We'd love to have Jamani at full speed. Uh, 
because uh, again, uh, coming out of the Bahamas in that early game, uh, you know, after we got back home, you know, he was dominating, uh, you know, the boards. He was blocking shots, changing shots, uh, and even becoming a, a more significant factor offensively. But every team's, you know, goes through that to some degree. But uh, we certainly missed your money, and more importantly, uh, I think is just disappointed for your money because senior year, fifth year red shirt, uh, great attitude, you know getting better every year and now he can't do what he potentially could do because of that injury so uh, disappointed for him but uh, but uh, he wants to go and uh, we'll certainly throw him in there and see how he feels uh, tomorrow here in the middle again coach you have kind of an interesting blend of guys you got guys who played in the final four you have grad transfers who are in their first NCAA tournament guys who played last year lost in the first round uh, talk about what their motivation is and that blend of guys who want to do well here in this tournament, some in their last chance, some in their one and only chance. That's exactly what we have, and, and uh, that kind of sums it up right there. You've got the full extreme, uh, two extremes with the guys that are returning, uh, those on the Final Four three years ago uh, to, uh, to one and out last year. Uh, uh, grad transfers, uh, one of the things they talked about is, is playing in the tournament when they made the decision to come to Oklahoma, so we're pleased that they have that opportunity. I know they'll be bouncing, bouncing off walls tomorrow to, to get out there and, and play. But uh, it, it's great. I mean, uh, you know, everyone, you know, 68 teams are playing, you know, 290 aren't. Uh, you know, it's a great experience for the guys, never to be taken for granted. And I uh, know these guys aren't taken for granted, and they're excited to be out there. Anything else for Coach Kruger? Thank you, Coach. Thanks very much. Thank
to watch that movie and just how it's serious.
We have the student athletes from Gardner Webb University, head coach Tim Kraft, SID Mark Rabb, and I'll introduce the players. We have David Effiani, Eric Jamison Jr., DJ Laster, and Jose Perez. If you could, when asking questions, please identify yourself and your agency and allow me to point for uh, directing our assistants with the microphones. Thank you. First question here in the middle. Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. DJ, what is it that has been clicking for you here over the, the last five games or, or the end of the season, and uh, how much confidence do you bring into this tournament? I have a lot of confidence. Uh, I think what's clicking is just being more efficient on the court and uh, with my shot selection and uh, getting the right shots and having my teammates find me in the right places. So I'm pretty confident in uh, uh, my workouts and everything that I'm doing. So I'm pretty confident coming into this tournament. Here in the front. <coughs> Nick Carboni from NBC Charlotte. I'll go to David. What has this uh, past week and a half been like, and what has today been like, and y or I guess starting yesterday, coming here for the first time and experiencing this for the first time, not only for you as players, but as a program? Yeah, it's, uh, it's very exciting. Um, past few years, we've been very close, um, losing the semifinals and quarterfinals, but uh, is this a great, Great experience to be here, um, and we're just going to try to continue going on. Uh, for all of you four guys, I know this last two weeks has been quite a blur. What what was your emotions pulling out yesterday morning at 830, knowing you were coming to Columbia, knowing you were coming to the NCAA tournament, knowing you had meaningful practices left ahead of you for each one of you guys? Uh, for me, it was a very exciting feeling. It's just a dream come true to play in the NCAA tournament. A lot of guys don't get a chance to play. And it's just a really, everybody's excited and happy and we're just ready to play. Yeah, like uh, like he said, uh, it's just just being in Mar being a part of March Madness is very big. Um, as a college player, that's what you want to do. Um, and I'm, it's just very exciting. DJ and Jose? Um, just great to have this opportunity to be here. Um, like Dave said, we've been to the semifinals, we've been to the quarterfinals, but we never uh, got uh, here in school history. So just an exciting experience and uh, just an opportunity to play and compete at the highest level. For me, this has been a dream come true, being here as a freshman and being here with these guys. They're, they're like my role models, and they're older. They always tell me what I'm doing wrong and right. And then just being here is it's like a dream come true, like they say. Here in the middle? And again, a reminder to identify name, name, your name as well as your association. Uh, Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch again. For DJ and Jose, uh, what do you guys see when you look at DeAndre Hunter, and, and what do you anticipate in terms of who might match up there? Well, he's a, he's a great player. He won Defensive Player of the Year in the ACC. Um, to me, he's going to be a tough matchup all night and just be physical with him as, as much as possible as we can and see what the refs let go and what they don't let go. Yeah, um, he's a great player, but uh, we just want to compete at the highest level and just uh, give him all we got. And he, I know he's going to come at us, so um, just we just want to compete. It's in the middle here on the aisle. <clears throat> Jacob Conley from the Daily Courier. What Anybody can answer this, but what does it mean playing so close to campus knowing that there's going to be tons of fans wearing the red and black tomorrow? It's going to be great here. It's, it's been a – I've still been getting, like, a couple phone calls on tickets and stuff. Um, I know it's going to be a great atmosphere. They're probably going to travel with a lot of people, and it's most likely going to be, like, a home game here. So let's see. It's just ready to play tomorrow. In the aisle, David Teal with the Daily Press in Newport News, Virginia. David, Mike was asking DJ earlier about his about his confidence, but what kind of confidence did the entire team derive from going on the road in the semifinals and the final of the conference tournament at Campbell and Radford and being able to win those games in those conditions? Yes, sir. Uh, it starts off with the coaches. Uh, I think I, the coaches do a great job just preparing us for each game. Um, we had a great game plan going into the games. Um, and then as, as, as players, we just go in there with just confidence. Um, we just go in there playing together, um, playing freely, and we just knew that if we play hard enough that we can be able to come out with those Ws. Uh, 
Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch, also for David or any other players who want to chime in. You guys obviously know what happened to UVA in this game last year. Do you, how do you think that will affect them for this game? Do you think they'll be more focused? Do you, do you think uh, they'll be tight or anything? Yeah, I mean, they're a high-level team. I feel like they'll come out with a uh, vengeance. Um, they'll come out ready to put, compete just as well as us. I think we're going to come out ready to compete. Um, last year's team for UVA is different from this year's team, so I don't think um, they'll, they'll play any differently, but they'll play um, uh, well. Well, they'll be more focused uh, coming into this game. On the right. Uh, Richard Walker with the Shelby Star and Gaston Gazette. Uh, just follow up on that question. Your coach talked about how the fact that they lost last year had no bearing this year, but it gives you a belief that it can happen. I mean, the number 16 had never beaten a number one to last year. Have y'all reflected on that, or do you even care about the seeding number? We just going to come ready to play, to be honest. Uh, anything can happen when we both on the court. They tie their shoes the same way we do, to be honest. So uh, we just ready to play. In the front row here. Yeah, some of my questions, Doug Daddy from the run of time, some of my question has been answered, but uh, just talk about what what you saw when the night of the the pairings came out. Did did you expect to see Virginia, or was that a surprise at all? We'll it wasn't really. Yeah, we'll oh, go, go ahead, ahead, Eric. Go ahead and start it. Uh, it wasn't really a surprise. We were prepared to play anybody. It doesn't really matter who we play. We're just excited to be here, and this is a this is a grand opportunity to play whoever. Anyone? Any other student athletes like to answer? Yeah, it wasn't much of a surprise. Um, like Eric said, we're, we're just ready to compete. Um, we're going to give it our best shot, and we're going to go out there and play our best. Here with Nick. For any of the players that want to answer this, this is the program's first time in the Division One NCAA tournament, but it's got a pretty rich basketball history, NIA, D2. What do you guys kind of learn about the program's basketball history when you get there, and how important is that for you guys to show it off on the big stage? It's very important uh, for us to show it off because uh, this is our first time in history doing this. So we just want to leave our legacy and leave it all out on the court. Uh, I trust all my teammates. We, uh, we're not the biggest team, but we got a lot of fight. We got a lot of heart. So I know all my teammates are going to go out there and fight and uh, give it all they have. And that's all I can ask from all my teammates and my coaches. They're going to prepare us the right way. And uh, I'm just glad we have a chance to compete and just have the opportunity to just play at the highest level, playing the number one seed also. This question is for any of you all that might have uh, watched last year's game with Virginia and uh, UMBC. When you watched it, I mean, you know, you all have to be college basketball fans all your life. It had to be like a pretty amazing thing to watch. Did you picture yourself potentially if you could pull this off this year getting into this position and if so I mean you know is that something that you imagine you know if you're going to go to a smaller school that you'll get this opportunity to knock off a number one seed let's start with David Effiani oh uh, yeah um playing a mid mid-major uh school you want to have those opportunities to play those higher level teams um as like all of us was being recruited at a mid mid mid-major level truly believe that we could play at the highest level. So um, I don't think that that matters to us. We're just going to go, go out there and compete. Eric? Uh, it's just a humbling experience to be here. So us playing Virginia is just going to make us better to be on the court with them. Uh, we go into every game thinking we're going to win the game, no matter who the opponent is. But we respect <clears throat> the program that they have. We know they're a high-level program. And we're still going to put our uh, plan together, and we're going to go out there and play. Yeah, um, like he said, they are a high-level program, and uh, I believe that we have high-level players on our team. So I think uh, if we just go out there and compete and just uh, play with them and uh, control the game and control the, the atmosphere of the game and how it's running, like, we have a good chance. Jose? Uh, first, let's start off. They have a great coach and a great program there. But um, just seeing UNBC beat them last year, it's just, like, it, it happens, like, you have to come ready to play every night here in March Madness, like, anything can happen, like everybody said before. We have a great coaching staff. Coach Kraft usually prepares us very hard when we're about to play a big-name school or a low-name school. Like, he's just very detailed on what we got to do, and I feel like tomorrow we're going to be highly prepared for them. In the back. Matt Harris, WSOC-TV in Charlotte. 
Just curious, playing off that last question, you see a 16 seed upset of one seed in Virginia, the team you guys are playing. That's the epitome of the underdog story. I'm curious for, for each of you guys, when you think about what an underdog is, whether it's David versus Goliath or, you know, Rocky Balboa, what comes to mind for you when you think underdog? Let's start with Jose and come this way. Uh, underdog to me is basically somebody like basically everybody's against them but the underdog knows they can go out there and basically come out with the win that's in my opinion and that's what I think um, underdog to me it just means that uh, uh, not everybody expect uh, for you or for your team to win but uh, I believe that the underdog, uh, underdog has like the faith and uh, the belief that they can win. So uh, just having faith and being able to uh, know that you can conquer, uh, even like the David and Goliath, like just knowing that, just having faith is uh, more like what I think of an underdog. A uh, perfect example of an underdog is like you said, the David and Goliath story. He just, he just can't go in with any fear. He just gotta go in with as much fight as possible and go out there and just execute the plan and see what go, see where everything goes. Yeah, underdog is just uh, what other people just views on the team. Um, I guess like you just go out there and just compete. In the front. Uh, Richard Walker, Shelby Star and Gaston Gazette for David and DJ. I know you guys talked about it, what, uh, David with you back to the Big South Media Day about you felt that this could be a special year as your senior year. Yes, sir. At what point in the season did you think this was possible? Was it beating Wake and Georgia Tech, or was it something else? Yeah, uh, being Wake and Georgia Tech definitely uh, let us know that we're we're capable of doing big things. Um, and then just the beginning of the season, everybody was just locked in. Um, started with like our preseason um, preseason pre workouts with relentless and bulldog skills. I just felt like everybody was just ready to compete, and everybody was just going at each other. Um, we were playing together. Uh, it just, it just, it was just special. Yeah, um, like David said, we've been locked in all year, and uh, being Wake Forest and uh, Georgia Tech really helped us with our confidence and stuff. But uh, as we got in the conference, um, we we kind of knew that we we were one of those teams that uh, people knew that they were gonna have to fight, and it's gonna be a dog fight all night. So I knew that uh, with all my teammates, like. Everybody's gonna go, go out with heart. Like uh, we're not gonna bend or fold. We're just gonna keep on going, keep on going. No matter the adversity, when adversity hits, we're gonna uh, take care of it the right way. So I knew that in crunch time, uh, we'll be able to uh, make the right decisions, and our coaches will make the right decisions. So I had trust in all my teammates and my coaches, and uh, just confidence in myself and confidence in all my other teammates to make plays down the stretch and. I think we have done that, and I'm glad that we have the opportunity to uh, play in the tournament to continue to uh, uh, play at that level. Got time for one more question? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Tim Kraft, head coach, Gardner-Webb University. Uh, it's a brief opening statement, and we'll open for questions. Well, it's, it's just great for our program to be here uh, and represent Gardner-Webb University in the NCAA tournament. Um, as I was telling the guys from Westwood One back there, there's, there's no one in our entire program, staff or players, administrators, that have been to the NCAA tournament. So this is an exciting uh, thing for every one of us, and um, you know, we're just we're thrilled to be a part of it.
here in the middle to start. Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. Tim, if you would share what you will about kind of your plans for DeAndre Hunter, because we were wanting Laster, Perez, what, wh where you see that matchup uh, best for you? Well, you know, he's, he's, he's a monster to defend. Um, you know, he's so good inside and out, really versatile. Um, you know, both of those guys will see him at times. You know, we'll have other guys that will see him. Uh, we got to try to limit his ability to catch it close to the basket um, and then, like, give him, you know, give who's ever on him a lot of help. Uh, but he's a terrific player, and, um, you know, we can't just guard him with one guy. In the middle of the aisle, David Teal with the Daily Press in Newport News, Virginia. Tim, what kind of confidence do you and your players derive from having already beaten two ACC squads this season? Well, I, th I think it's hel it helped us in, in our league, certainly, um, you know, be confident in who we are as a team. Um, you know, I, I think it, you know, it, it, it certainly helps our guys to, to know that, that, you know, we can, we can beat a team that's from a power conference, uh, which we had done in previous years um, as well. But, um, uh, you know, and Georgia Tech and Wake Forest, uh, no disrespect to those programs, but, you know, Virginia is a different animal for sure. You know, they're the ACC champs. Uh, but um, it's not a negative thing. It's certainly a positive thing that we won those games and, and can draw some confidence from those. In the middle, on the aisle. Uh, Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch. Coach, uh, do you think, and I know you can't be in Tony Bennett's head or the UVA players' heads, but do you think that they will be more focused or more inspired based on what happened to them last year in this round? Yeah, I, I would think potentially they would be. Um, but, uh, you know, I think they've done a great job kind of handling that whole thing throughout the year from the start of the year or, or when it was, you know, as soon as they lost the game, you know, they did a great job of kind of, I think, putting that behind them and moving forward. And they've had a tremendous season. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure whether there will be more focus or less focus, but um, we know they're a great team and, you know, It'll be a be a challenge. Uh, Richard Walker, Shelby Star, and Guesting is that Coach Kraft? There have been so many firsts this year. A lot of people talk about a team coming in here the first time, worry about jitters, you know, nervousness. Being in this big moment, uh, you know, how would you deal with that? Because obviously you had the first ACC road win, first Big South tournament finals, and then Big South tournament championship. Yeah, we have. We've we've done a lot of first things this year. First team to win 20 games at Gardner Webb uh, in the regular season. Um, first team to be undefeated at home at Gardner Webb. You know, we've had a great year. We've been able to accomplish a lot of those uh, first first time things. Um, I think for us, the biggest thing is just our, our guys got to just play loose. You know, they just got to go out and, and play loose and free. And um, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to really get them to just feel like, hey, let's go out and just have some fun. Let's go have some fun. I mean, we got to be detailed and in, in, in our in our plan. But uh, offensively, I mean, we're going to be playing against one of the best defenses in the nation on a huge stage. Let's just go out and let it fly. I mean, I think that's got to be our, our, our guys' mindset in order to have success. In the middle on the aisle. Tim, I, I believe you're friendly with Coach Aldrich at Longwood. Uh, he was on the staff at UMBC. Yeah. Did you hit him up for any advice <laughs> or any uh, insight on how to pull the upset? I, I did talk to him. Yeah, I did talk to him. And, um, you know, and not just about – their plan for Virginia, but kind of their plan for the week and, you know, just how they help their, their guys ha have a, that, the type of mindset they had coming into the game and, um, you know, what they did in practice and just kind of how they attacked shoot around and just, you know, logistical things as well. But, but I did talk to Griff. Um, you know, he said this, but a lot of people said this, is just enjoy the moment, enjoy the experience. Um, you know, um, you know, he, and I just taught, I just alluded to, to trying to play, just play with confidence, you know, and, and just, just play, be, be attack minded and try to be loose and free. And, um, you know, that, that's the approach we're going to try to take. Coach, we're going to see here on the left side. Uh, Jerry Ratcliffe, jerryratcliffe.com. Uh, Tim, a lot of people talk about Virginia's defense, but what concerns you about their offense and, and how do you defend that? Well, they've been so good defensively for so many years, um, so, so, and their defense is suffocating. Uh, but, but this year's team offensively, 
I think uh, going into the tournament, they're like the number two rated uh, defense or offense in, in Ken Palm efficiency. So um, they, they, they really grind the clock down. They make you play for long periods of time. Um, they're, they're, they're really sharp with their execution, whether they're running their kind of mover blocker and pin downs and flares and constant motion and cutting and screening. Uh, and then they do it with really, really good players. Uh, so uh, they, they present a lot of challenges for you. I think Ty Jerome is um, the guy that kind of is the head of the snake in terms of can score, can facilitate, uh, has got size, um, can make shots, can score it in the paint. Um, and then obviously, you know, Hunter's had an amazing year and can do so many things for you. And then guy that can make shots at such a high level. And, and then the other thing that concerns me about them is their ability to offensive rebound. And they're two big guys, uh, whoever they have in, uh, and, they, and they rotate those post players and they're all big and they're all strong and um, they crash the glass. And that's been a little bit of a challenge for our team this year is defensive rebounding. So, um, you know, trying to make a miss it, it, and, and uh, you know, be able to continue your stance to play late in the clock, get a great contest and make a miss and then limit them to one shot. You know, all of it's a challenge. Here in the front, Coach. Coach Jacob Conley from the Daily Courier. A lot of teams in your position just try to break it down into four-minute segments between the media timeout and then you go and adjust from there. Is that kind of your approach tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, we kind of do that. I think a lot of teams do that, but, but we, we break it, the game up into what we call four-minute wars. So, you know, we're trying to take each four minutes and trying to win that, that four minutes try to focus on that four minutes when you're in that media timeout. And, uh, but yes, we do. On the left, Coach. Uh, Tim, Jeffrey Collins with the Associated Press. Um, so how much of your job tomorrow is psychological and how much of it is X's and O's? Well, I think it's both. I think it's, it's both. I think it's 100% both. Uh, and I think actually, and I think it always is. You know, it always is 100% both. Um, you know, no, you know, in every game, there's a different challenge you're facing from a psychological standpoint every time you go out there. Uh, and certainly with this one, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, to just just enjoy it, uh, seize the moment, um, you know, and, 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 you know, well, I know we're going to play hard, but I, I want us to play, you know, really loose and attack minded offensively because I think that's, you know, if we come out and play tight then we got no shot. Coach in the back. Matt Harris, WSOC TV in Charlotte. Coach, I asked your players what it meant to be an underdog and got some pretty good answers. I'm just curious, how has your team embraced the role of being an underdog while also rationalizing the fact that a number one seed, as we saw last year, is not unbeatable? Sure. Well, I, you know, I think that's a familiar, that's a familiar uh, place that we've been in. Uh, really, you know, I think, you know, since in my six years, we, we've, we've been the underdog a lot. You know, a lot of times we're not – you know, this year we were picked six in our league, um, came in as the four seed, won the tournament. Uh, we, every year we play, you know, four to five road games against power five opponents. Uh, so, so we're certainly used to that role. And, um, you know, I think our guys enjoy embracing that role. We kind of uh, took that mindset this season, you know, when we were picked six in the league that, that hey, man, no, nobody's expecting us to do this. we got a great team in this locker room. And, and every time out, kind of coming out with a chip on your shoulder. And, and playing with an edge. Uh, so sometimes that underdog role helps you uh, play with that edge that you need, you know, to play well. Coach, down front. You talked about talking to Coach Aldrich. Uh, how much have you mentioned the UMBC game to your team, and have you drawn anything from that? I haven't mentioned – we haven't mentioned it much. I mean, they, they all know about, you know, the game, but, but we haven't talked about it a whole lot. Um, you know, our conference tournament happens earlier than, than the rest. Um, we, we, we won the, our, our league championship on the Sunday prior to Selection Sunday. We gave them two days off, and the first thing we did on Wednesday in our meeting was try to lock our guys in to, you know, hey, we've achieved something great. You know, now let's focus on playing a game and, and, and getting ready to play, it, play well. And so, you know, we showed a lot of upset uh, video clips but, you know, really from the last 20 years, you know, and we haven't really, uh, you know, spent a lot of time on that specific one. But just, hey, you know, anything can happen in this tournament. That's why this tournament is great. And um, let's get focused on preparing to play the best that we can play. 
uh, you know, when when the when the bracket comes out. In the middle on the aisle. Tim, you mentioned Ty Jerome as, quote, the head of the snake. Can you expound on that mm -hmm. a, a little bit, it's, especially what he does on the offensive end and creating angles and getting to places in his court vision? Sure, sure. You know, he's just such a multi-dimensional player, and um, he can play in pick and roll, and uh, or, or he's coming off those pin downs, uh, you know, down screens where, like you said, just gets a little bit of an angle on a closeout, now gets into the paint. Uh, can make jumpers in that, those mid-range areas, uh, can make floaters, can draw defense and dump it off to their post players for, for layups or spray it out to shooters for threes. Um, and, he, you know, again, he does it in a lot of different ways. He can just uh, do it on, on a pick and roll in a ball screen situation or, or coming off a, a screen off the ball um, or just beat you one-on-one -on -one sometimes from the top. Uh, and then, you know, he, he, he's able to, to do that as well because his change of pace is so good and he's such a good shooter. So you got to be tight to him or, you know, he can shoot it from about 22, 23 feet um, at a high level. So um, he creates some problems for, for you defensively just from a one-on-one -on -one standpoint, but then in their actions with the pick and rolls and the, and the, and the down screens. Richard, uh, on the right. Richard Walker, uh, Shelby Star, Gaston Gazette. You talked about earlier that six season preseason big. I sensed a quiet confidence out of you guys even back at Big South Media Day. Mm -hmm. How have you navigated that, and, and how special is it? Just now you're finally here. It's you know we're not talking about it. We're actually doing it. Uh, it's, it's really special, but but uh, yeah, I do think our team has had a confidence um, just going into the season. We we got a really good mix of experience uh, on our team and some really talented young players. You know some of the guys that were up here. DJ Laster as a senior, David Epiani, fifth-year senior, um, Christian Turner's a, a junior point guard, Jaheim Cornwall is a sophomore point guard with a lot of experience that's been good for us. Um, Eric Jamison's a fourth-year, you know, redshirt junior. Justin Jenkins a redshirt junior. So, you know, from the guys that are kind of out front that have been real productive for us to our kind of role players that have just been great leaders in our locker room, um, all of that has really helped our team. And then, you know, we've got a great freshman class, and Jose Perez has been the guy as a freshman that's been super productive for our team. Um, so I think, you know, from the preseason, our guys really felt like um, that, that we, we had the makings of a team that could compete to win a championship in our league. Uh, but it's really special to, to, you know, having a team that can do it and then being able to accomplish it are two different things. And we've had other teams that uh, were talented enough to get here. And, um, and, you know, we lost in the semifinals three years. Um, so it's hard to, to make it through that conference tournament. And for this team to be able to, to play as well as they did um, those three games in those four days and, and be sitting here right now is, is certainly really special. The front row. Yeah, Doug Dowdy from the Roanoke Times again. I believe you're uh, scoring 78 points per game. Uh, they're leading the nation in defense at 56 or whatever they're giving up. Talk about tempo and will it, will it make a big difference? Well, you know, they certainly want to play at a slower tempo. They're, 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 they're going to be really hard to get anything in transition on. They do such a good job in transition D. You know, we certainly want to try to score in transition when we can. Um, and then, you know, offensively, they're going to do a great job of controlling the tempo by a lot of times playing late in the clock. So, you know, it, it's not a huge thing for our team. We're not a team that, that's emphasizing to playing really fast or, you know, hey, we're playing really slow. We're, uh, you know, our tempo's pretty average. Um, and so that's, that's not a huge emphasis for us. You know, it's going to be, I think it's, the emphasis is for us is, hey, we got to be down in a stance sometimes for 28, 29, 30 seconds um, at a time defensively to, to get a stop because they're going to make you play two, three, four sides of the floor sometimes before they shoot the ball. And uh, we just got to have great mental toughness in order to, to defend late in the clock. But the, in terms of the amount of possessions and that, it's not, you know, it's not a huge thing for us. Last question here in the middle. Sticking with the 100% that's X's and O's, um, you guys did not take the most threes in the league, but you had the best three-point percentage, sure. the way they pack in the lane, how important will your three-point shooting be in this one? It's going to be really important, and, and you said it uh, from our numbers. You know, our, our off offensively, we want to try to attack the paint on every possession, and we're trying to get paint touches, you know, every every possession before we shoot. 
And uh, they make it real hard to do that with their, with their defense. They make it really hard. Just their, their one-on-one D is so good, I think, on the ball. And then they get in the gap so well and their positioning so good. You know, they're, they're gonna, it's going to be hard to get into the paint. So, you know, I think we got to move the ball. We got to cut. Um, we got to be patient. Um, and we just got to make simple plays so that when we drive it and that help comes, we just got to make the easy play and spray it and be ready to shoot for sure or be ready to, to, to attack the next closeout. But, you know, I do think, you know, making jump shots is important, uh, you know, for our team uh, to beat a team like Virginia because they're really good, but also because of the way they defend and, and how they pack their, their defense into the, into the paint. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, guys. the likely players That's my real role, yeah. Jump, a couple of them jumped in 
and this all initiated a discussion and this all should link to what we We've had to go down the line a bit a couple oh, yeah, ways. Yeah, that's that's Trump what committee, I mean, was a waste of Yeah, that's that's what we're trying. Okay. It's just that the, the issue is that we have now got to rebalance it if we can to the point that we can actually go in the same direction. Okay. That's my opinion. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, sir.
We have the student athletes from Old Miss. We'll introduce the players, Terrence Davis, Devontae Schuler, and Brian Tyree. Are we open for questions here in the middle? Devontae, when you, when you saw the draw and you saw Columbia pop up next to your team's name, just what was your first thought? Um, it was just an opportunity for me to come back home and play in front of my family and friends, and also for me to have a better chance for me to play better in my home state. In the aisle in the middle. Lou Bajek from the State Paper. Devontae, um, what's it been like? Uh, talked to your sister earlier this week, ticket requests and everything. So uh, how, how many people you expect to have here? And just um, last time you guys were here last month, it uh, didn't go so well. What needs to happen to, uh, to have a better performance? Um, I have plenty of family and friends coming, of course. Uh, this is like right in the middle of where I'm from. And for the most part, for me just to come back and stay focused and just for me to come back and get the win, that's the main part of me coming back home and playing in this. And yeah, that's really it. In the back on the aisle. Continue the line of questions for Devontae. Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. Uh, I believe you were teammates in high school with Braxton Key from Virginia. Right, I am. Uh, what, what do you remember about him, and have you guys uh, maintained a friendship? Oh, definitely. Um, I won a national, champion, national championship with him, so always, always stay in contact. And Braxton is not even just a friend of mine on the court. Off the court, he's a great person, and we always stay in contact. He always in contact with my sister, so it's a long relationship. Here on the front. Brian and Terrence and Devontae, if you'd like, you could chip in on this too, man. Uh, experience is always considered a big thing in the NCAA tournament. Are you guys concerned that you don't have any? Brian, if you would start. Let's start with Brian and then come down the road this way. Um, I do uh, feel like experience is a big thing in anything you do. Um, we're experienced guards and we played a lot of college basketball, but this is our first time in the tournament. So this will be a new experience for us, but um, on the other side of it, we'll be just as excited as any other person would be for this uh, major opportunity. Uh, definitely for me too. Uh, we definitely gotta <clears throat> have a great experience. Of course, I ain't never been here, but but us going against a D1 college basketball team, we're gonna treat it as if it was a SEC uh, regular season game. So, and just to go along with them, you know, we uh we three guys who've been playing with each other, you know, for quite some time now, and uh you know we have no experience in it in the NCAA tournament, but we do have experience together with this team, so. Uh, We'll be okay along the road. Here in the front on the aisle. TD, this is what you came back for to play in this. So now that you're here, what's the feeling for you? Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, you know, get to share this moment, you know, with some of the guys that you, you know, you've been around forever. And uh, just, to, just to be here, man, it's, it's just special. But, you know, we're not, sat we're not satisfied. Front row. Hey, Terrence, the last couple of games you've down here, the last couple of games you've had a hard time, you know, scoring, getting buckets. Does it you kind of flush that, or do you feel like you got to see a couple go in to get some confidence going tomorrow? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's once the game over, though, that's, that's flush. I mean, uh, you know, the great thing about it, you, you have another opportunity. We have another opportunity to play, uh, you know, tomorrow, and uh, that's just the good thing about it. Stay on the front on the right side. Breed from your, your scout of Oklahoma so far, what stands out about what they do well and, and what kind of challenges might there be in this game? Um, they shoot the ball really well. Um, they also exploit mismatches very well. Uh, all, their, all their players from one to five can bring down the ball or dribble the ball, and uh, they do a lot of isolation. So um, we just need to guard the ball, stay in front of our men, stay second in the air, um, uh, be physical with them and rebound the ball, and I think we should be fine. Bree, a big reason why y'all were able to do the turnaround is because Devontae got moved to point guard, and you got to be moved off the ball. What kind of growth have you seen in Devontae and what he's been able to do at that position specifically? Tremendous growth. I mean, even from his freshman year uh, when I was playing point and uh, he was playing the two guard, uh, he, he grew tremendously in that year, but just from his freshman year into his sophomore year, uh, just his leadership qualities has grown tremendously. Um, 
handling the ball, making better decisions, uh, you know, getting our, getting the team in the right sets. And um, I don't want to say taking the back seat to me and TD, but, you know, not taking as many shots and, you know, not maybe not even getting the spotlight at all times. But, you know, he just keeps it going, and he's a major part of our team. And without him, this train doesn't go. So, I mean, his growth has been tremendous, and, you know, he's still not done yet. And we got a long way to go as a team. Brian, along it's, just, it's just a reminder if we could remember to introduce ourselves and say our affiliation. Uh, Brian Rippey, Super Talk Mississippi. Brian, what, along those lines, what specifically has that freed you up to do on the wing as opposed to you having to play point last year? Uh, it's freed me up to uh, just be a lot more aggressive offensively. Um, you know, that's what coach wants me to do, assert myself on offensive end and, you know, take better shots than I did last year. And Devontae's helped me do that a lot this year. And, uh, you know, just getting me open because he's such, you know, an aggressive guard, you know, a lot of help will come and kick outs to me and TD on the wings. And then it's time for, you know, us to make a play and, you know, try and get the ball in the basket. Second row in the aisle. Parrish, all for Daily Journal and Tupelo, Mississippi. Devontae, as a younger, as a young person, how many times did you come to this gym as a fan and did you play here? Um, <clears throat> I didn't really come to many games, but my sister was a big fan of the basketball team, my, my brother, so they always tell me, like, coming to USC, getting a good feel for how Coach uh, Frank Martin is, like, just for me coming, being around, and the environment for me to get a feel of a college basketball stadium. It's been great. Second row in the aisle. Ben Garrett, 247 Sports. TD, uh, Devontae is a guy that you took under your wing really, really early in his career. Uh, was important in getting him here, actually. What have you seen from him and how far he's coming as a player and just over, all around in terms of his game? Well, uh, you know, like Brian touched on, Devontae, uh, just a tremendous player, you know, uh, to be a freshman and play key roles last year, then to play a whole nother role, you know, point guard, ne never played, you know, point that, that position ever. Uh, it's just, it just so tells you, you know, how good of a player he are, you know, uh, just to, play a whole different position and be and be good at it and, you know, get his team to, you know, March Madness. It's just, it just tells you everything. Any more questions for the student athletes? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, guys.
We'll go ahead and get started with Old Miss head coach Kermit Davis and SID Adam Kuffner. Uh, coach, if you just make a brief opening statement, and then we'll open for the uh, questions. Yeah, you know, first of all, probably in been one of the most rewarding years in my 37 years of of coaching to to come to Ole Miss, which is back home for me in our, my state, and uh, and to be involved and connect with the Ole Miss spirit, and you know, you take a team that was that finished last, picked last. And for the improvement that they've made, I have so much respect for our players. And, uh, and then to see the connection with our fan base that, you know, we probably grew, I think, over nearly 25% uh, increase in attendance in SEC games, which was the most of any league team. So, so that part has been great. And then to, to play a really good Oklahoma team in the NCAA tournament, known Lon for a long time, He's had so much success in this tournament. He's got another really, really good team. And I think it'll be one of those really, really good 8-9 matchups. We'll start here, second row in the middle. Ben Garrett, the Ole Miss Spirit. Kermit, uh, Devontae Shuler's move to point guard was so big as far as the turnaround is concerned. Uh, how far has he come in the, at that position specifically? What have you seen as far as uh, what he's been able to do, ball handling, all that stuff? Yeah, he's probably been the key to our team, Ben. And, you know, we kind of we got nicked up for about five or six games uh, after the Mississippi State game, and he's now back healthy. You know, he didn't even play point guard at Oak Hill for Steve Smith. You know, he kind of played off the ball all the time and played off the ball as a freshman. But we, we really met in the spring, and I really think he understood. The biggest thing he's done, he's valued the ball. He's a tough competitive guard on the ball defending, and he really has. He, you know, Brian and TD's had these great all-SEC years, but Devontae Shooter's probably been our, maybe our most valuable player on the floor. Coach, here on the left. Uh, Kermit Jeffrey Collins with the Associated Press. What, you know, you mentioned this team was finished last, picked last. What point did you realize that they had the potential to be an NCAA tournament team and exceed all these expectations? You know, we, we, we took a trip to Canada that really helped us. We, I've said it before, we left a lot of bad basketball in Canada, but, but it gave us a, a, a really a time to get some extra practices. An NCAA tournament team, probably when we beat Auburn at home, you know, and they were ranked, and then like three days later we go to Mississippi State and beat another ranked team. So probably at that particular time, then we got ranked ourselves that you kind of started thinking that maybe we do have a chance, didn't talk about it to our team, you know, to play an NCAA tournament, be a postseason team. Coach, on the right, second row. Uh, Joe Masada from the Oklahoman. Kermit, you and Lon Kruger are two of the most experienced coaches in the field. Have, do you have any familiarity with him or cross path with him at any stops? You know, I've just, I've just known Lon forever. This is the first time that I've ever coached against Lon's team in any, any game. Uh, but I guess I've just always admired Lon and, Followed him when he was at Florida and Illinois and, and, and obviously at Oklahoma. I uh, probably are. We, we both had a same assistant, a guy named Greg Grinzing, that I hired uh, when Lon was at, uh, the, he was at Vegas fixing to go to Oklahoma. And Greg was a great assistant of mine at, at Middle Tennessee. But, you know, like I said, just, just, just a coach and just one of his peers. I've just admired him for what he's done. And the main thing is about how he's gone about his business for so long in his career. Coach, front row. Brian Rippey, Super Talk Mississippi. Kermit, how, it seems like Bruce has really put it together in the last month. How much of what you've gotten from him has kind of changed the dynamic of y'all's team? Yeah, you know, he, he's, a, he's a critical matchup tomorrow, he and Don both. I mean, obviously, number one, Doolittle is an undersized, he's really a four man that he plays a five, and so he gets good matchups. And so, you know, can you guard Doolittle? Can Bruce and Dom, especially Bruce, can he guard him at 17 feet isolations that, that line puts him in? So that's a big critical key. And then can we throw the ball to Bruce, pick up fouls, and make guys guard him around the goal? We know we can pick and pop and shoot balls. So, so yeah, if, if us going forward, if we're going to have some success in this tournament, he's going to be a big part of it. Coach, on the outside and in the back. Courtney Grab, WCBI. Kermit, you've had so many closed games just go down right to the wire. Is that something you think you've – You've talked to your team a lot about, you know, finishing at the end of it, but do you think that's kind of fueling them as you head into a game with such pomp and circumstance? Yeah, you know, I, we, we have. We've, we've, we've played a hard, you know, late year schedule. I mean, we're, we're up one, and Grant Williams makes a shot with four seconds to go to beat us at home. One possession game with Kentucky. We go to Arkansas and have the ball at one, and they hit a last-second shot to beat us. And then, obviously, Alabama – you're up 16 and get beat at the end. So it's a concern, you know. But, uh, but I think some of those games we've been really, really competitive and have played really good in a lot of parts of those games. That's just something we'll have to, to draw on. But you're right. We've got to do a better job of closing games out, you know, and just making basketball plays at the end of those clocks. Coach on the right, second row. 
Patriots ask Clarion Ledger, Kermit, coming off that Alabama game, how has been the focus and the recovery and practice after, after a loss like that? Yeah, we got after him pretty good just when we got back. I mean, that, the next day on Friday, we watched the tape before we left from Nashville to go back to Oxford. And then on Saturday and Sunday, we had two really physical practices, not very long, hour and 20 minutes, but I got back to trying to rebound and defend. And then as the week, you know, we got selected to come to the regional, then we've kind of backed off. But it's been really good. I wanted to get that out of our system, you know, and back playing. We need to go up and down some. And so, uh, yeah, I think our attitude and energy level has been, been really good this week. Staying on the uh, right side, Coach. Jim Lozado again from the Oklahoma. And Kermit, this seems to be uh, – like, like a pretty good guard-oriented matchup, especially with your group. Um, but what do you see on the other side, specifically with uh, Jamal Bienemy, the freshman point guard? I just told Lon, I saw him in the, in the hall, and I said, God, Lon, I've, I've watched you probably 10 games ago and then watched him till now, and he's got to be one of the most improved players in the Big 12. I mean, you can tell he's just kind of grown up as, as a freshman. He's got great size, great pace. The biggest thing, he just takes care of the ball. You know, then obviously James is a real physical, kind of a celebrated guy that's played in the Final Four. And, uh, yeah, I like him. And there are other guys who are real physical, driving guards. So you're right. I mean, our three guards are going to play really well tomorrow. Right here in the middle, Coach. Parrish all for Daily Journal and Tupelo. Kermit, a lot is made of experience in this tournament, and you have some, but uh, but your players don't. What? How do you think that factors in? Well, you know, I think because you got Oklahoma, you got some guys who played in the Final Four. You got a team that played in it last year, you know, in the tournament. So, uh, but I just think that when you play in leagues like ours, when you played in those kind of games every night, I told our team yesterday, I said, guys, you've been tested in every way possible a college team can get tested by what you went through in an 18-game schedule in this league. And so, you know, they've been in these big environments and big arenas. And uh, do, do you have a little nerves, probably a little jitters, your first when the ball's tipped and you get it going? Sure. You know, but the biggest thing is, is, is just stay true to yourself. Do what you do. Don't try to go out of character and just be who we are, the best version of our team, and hope they'll do that tomorrow. Coach, back right corner. Courtney Rapp, WCBI again. Transition defense has been something that your guys normally do very well. How important is transition D just going to be in a team against Oklahoma? Yeah, anytime you play Oklahoma or Lon's team, transition defense is always big. I mean, because Doolittle can get the ball off the defensive boards and bring it up as a center, a so-called center. So it makes you adjusting, getting back defensively from different matchups, you know. And so, and obviously the way that they shoot the ball in the perimeter, they get the stretch four is so good. I mean, he's as good a stretch four shooter as it is in college basketball. So you're right, that's something that's been kind of a staple of ours for many, many years, wherever we've coached. And uh, it's got to be true to form tomorrow. Coach on the left. Kermit, Jeffrey Collins with the Associated Press again. How helpful has it been to have the, I guess as of tomorrow, the eight days off? I mean, did your team kind of need that rest after a pretty much of a grind? You know, I think mentally. I mean, nobody wants to get beat in their conference tournament by any means. Obviously, we're disappointed. But, you know, probably in the end, I think mentally it's, it's been really good for our team. You know, a team that, like I said, went to Canada, had extra days of practice. So we've – we have really stuck to about an hour, hour and ten minutes this week at most. And uh, so I, I do think I, I saw it with Brian and even TD the last couple of days, a little fresher legs and, and fresh minds. hope it does help. And the front. Kermit, excuse me, Parrish all for Daily Journal and Tupelo. Kermit said um, – Lon said he had an awareness of you. Have you guys coached against one another? No, we have not. We've, we've just known each other for, for a long time, you know, and uh, just through the, you know, recruiting and, and different uh, basketball as you cross paths. And uh, like I said, it's just been a, a great respect on my part for Lon. What would you say is kind of a, a staple, I guess, of his teams and, and how you have seen them through the years, I guess? You know, he's always – they've guarded at a high level, you know, and I've just – the way the ball moves offensively, I think he's just always had great spacing. He, he was one of really the first guys. I mean, I know the dribble drive, the spacing and driving balls. And, and uh, I just think their they're best players shoot it. They put, he puts them in spots to catch and score, and he's done that his whole career. Anything else for Coach? All right. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thank you.
We have the student athletes from Virginia, head coach Tony Bennett, SID Eric Bakker. Uh, student athletes with us are Kyle Guy, DeAndre Hunter, Ty Jerome, and Jack Salt. And we will now open the floor for questions. Start here on the front left. Uh, Ty, you committed to Virginia early in your junior year of high school. Kyle committed like six weeks later. When did you meet Kyle for the first time? When did you first play together? And this is for you too, Kyle. And how quickly did you realize that your games complemented each other? Um, yeah, I remember I committed, and then Kyle started following me on all, every social media. I was like, why is like, who is this kid? And then uh, um, I think we started talking over social media. When he told me he was going to commit, and then I think I met him. Was it Mary Klein? Yeah, the first time we played in the All-Star game together, um, called Mary Klein Classic. It was in New Jersey, so he stayed in my house for the weekend. And um, we played there for the first time together. We were on the same team, um, and it was – it was just fun, and then we, we uh, also went to the Top 100 camp together, too, at Virginia, so, yeah. Kyle? Yeah, I mean, he pretty much nailed it. Um, I definitely bombarded him with a lot of questions and follows on all uh, forms of social media, and then I uh, invited myself to his house for the tournament or for the All-Star game, and then <laughs> uh, we've been friends ever since, so. In the middle, back row. For any of you guys, Having played in this arena already this year, how much of an advantage is it for you knowing kind of the shooting background? It's a unique background with the wide sight lines here. How do you guys feel about playing here, having played here already this season? We'll start with Jack and then come down the road towards me. Yeah, I mean, it was good to play here during the season, so kind of got a feel for the environment. Um, so yeah, it's good to have that, that game in our back pocket. Yeah, like he said, um, anytime you can get familiar with an arena is always a a little bit of a, a benefit, but when the ball's tipped, nothing really matters. Um, yeah, like they said, having experience in this gym uh, definitely helps us a lot. Yeah, they pretty much nailed it. I don't need to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the red shirt here on the third row. Aaron McFarling with the Roanoke Times. Ty, we know DeAndre's probably not going to talk about himself too much, but you know he's been on the team two years and hasn't had a chance to play in this event. Uh, just can you describe what it's like to have him on your side heading into what you hope will be a long run here? Yeah, um, just a guy that might be one of the, might be the most versatile guy in the tournament. Um, can guard one through five almost. Um, can get a bucket when when you when you need one. Isolation, offensive rebound, knock down, catch and shoot shots. So does everything. Um, a guy you want on your team, um, and just a pretty cool kid off the court too. Front row on the right. Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch uh, for Ty and Kyle. Um, the Gardner Webb coach was saying that he, he's telling his players have fun, play loose, attack, be confident, enjoy the moment, enjoy the experience. Don't be tight. If you're tight, we have no chance. Are you guys hearing the same thing from Coach Bennett? Is that the attitude you guys are taking into the game? Kyle first and then Ty. Yeah, I would say uh, most teams are probably saying that. You want to play free. You want to have a, a, a sense of joy and fun when you're playing the game. But it's also um, it's when you step on the court, it's business time. So there's a, a level of focus that we have to have and uh, preparation today that we're looking forward to. So uh, For us, it's about doing what we've done to get to this point all year. Uh, we've had a pretty successful year so far. And it's just about um, when we step on the court, playing with that edge that we've had all year. Second row in the middle. Doug Daddy with the run of times. This is for Kyle. The Gardner Webb coach referred to Ty as the head of the snake. Are you okay with that? 100%. I've been saying that all year. He runs the show, and uh, we just sit back and wait for his passes and then knock him down. So. Huh? Do you try to make him mad? Or? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was a, is that a compliment. Is it a compliment? I don't know. I think it is. So. It is, so. <laughs> Third row in the middle. Ty, David Teal with the Daily Press and Newport News. Um, you mentioned the edge with which you guys play. What is the source of that edge? Where does it come from? Um, I think it comes from 
knowing what we want to accomplish, how hard it is to accomplish, what we, how hard it is to do that. Um, last year's defeat, um, and just the desire to be great, and um, yeah, all, all those different things, and try to trying to instill that in every single person on the team. So, you know, when you when we get into a tight game or when we get into a, a tournament game like tomorrow, it's not just one or two guys or three guys with that edge. You know, you're playing 10 different guys that have that same edge. Third row in the middle. Thank you. Uh, Phil Cornblut, Sports Talk Radio Network for Kyle. You can speak for your teammates as well. After what happened a year ago, for those of us who haven't been around you, uh, how have you guys kind of dealt with that history moment, and how anxious are you to um, kind of get that off your back and, and get a roll going this year? Yeah, Coach Bennett and the coaching staff did a great job of, you know, making sure that we talked about it after um, when, you know, the next preseason started and stuff. So um, we've become closer as a team, you know. Um, that loss doesn't define us. Um, we watched a TED Talk, and he said something along the lines of, you know, if you use it right, then it can buy you a ticket to a place you couldn't have gone any other way. So um, that's kind of been the motto, and you know, we know it happened. Losses happen. It's going to happen eventually. Um, you know, just ready for this this year. So about midway back on the right hand side. Kyle, this is for you again. Nick Carboni with NBC Charlotte. Last week in Charlotte at the ACC tournament, I think you said to the media, you know, you guys don't have to apologize for asking about last year. I don't know if you meant that or not, but. Uh, what do do people kind of toe the line with you guys when they see you around campus or in the media when they approach you about last year and how badly do you guys want them to know that that is behind you? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to speak for anyone else, but you, like I said, you don't have to apologize to me. I'm very transparent, and no one around campus or, or grounds really, you know, mentions it to us or anything. Um, some people don't let it go on social media. I get Venmos all the time saying that they got, I got to pay them $5 because we lost. So, um, you know, I don't pay them, by the way. But, um, <laughs> you know, definitely is behind us, and we're ready to, you know, put on a show this year so, you know, we can talk about something else. Back row in the middle. For Ty as well as Kyle, how much does it help having a, a lot of that same group around that, that knows that hurt and that can fuel that? going forward into, into this tournament? Ty first and then Kyle. Um, it's definitely helpful, but you got to be careful because you don't want to play with anger. You don't, you don't, I mean, you got to be careful playing with anger, I should say. Um, you know, last year, like Kyle said earlier, we watched a TED talk about it. We, we discussed it a lot. Um, we use it as motivation. Um, and like we said, uh, it can take you to a place, you know, you've never been if you use it the right way. So it's, it's more about um, doing what we do, um, playing with our same edge every single game we've played so far this year, um, rather than just knowing we got to make it up to last year and playing with anxiousness and, and anger. Yeah, I would say um, in practice, you know, whenever somebody's tired or, you know, um, you're trying to fight through a rep or you want to take a playoff or something, I always think back to that. Um, and then when I'm on the court, I don't even think about it because I'm focused on what's in front of me because if you're, you know, too focused on, on the past and you're not going to be able to move forward. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a chip on our shoulder, but it doesn't define us, and we're just trying to move past it and um, let let the inspiration and motivation behind it uh, take us somewhere we haven't been. The back right. Real quick, Kyle, Allison Williams, ESPN. Um, screensaver on your phone, is it still the picture? Yes, yes, ma'am. DeAndre, for you, as you hear these guys talk about last year and knowing you couldn't be on the court for that, just kind of curious your mentality and what emotions it stirs up as you hear them reflecting on last year and look forward to this year. I'm just excited uh, for myself and more for the team uh, just to get back to this stage and have the same opportunity as last year to play against a 16 seed and possibly erase what happened last year, but people are going to still remember, but we have another opportunity to do something really special in this tournament. Front row on the left. This is for Kyle. Kyle, Ty has talked about how much he learned from London the one year they played together. Was there anybody that first year of the older guys who was a mentor to you? Yeah, I would say London also. He was my uh, roommate on the roads, so I learned a lot from him. But um, to be honest, I learned so much from all these guys every day. Even freshman year, I was learning a lot from Ty and his mindset and the way he plays the game. And um, so, yeah. Front row. Paul Woody, uh, Richmond Times Dispatch again, Ty and Kyle. This TED talk you're referring to, was this specifically about your situation or was it about 
handling an adversity and and using it to your advantage in the future. And who made the TED talk? No. Either whoever has that answer. No, they didn't make a TED talk just for us. <laughs> um, <laughs> they. <laughs> it was. Um, who, who His name was the storyteller. Yeah, it was the um, storyteller, oh, okay. um, and it was just about. It actually had nothing to do with basketball. The TED talk. It was um, a story he told about um, his experience, his life experiences, which weren't basketball related, but most of the times you can relate um, almost anything to your passion. So. Second row in the aisle. Yeah, this is for Kyle again. Could you talk about Braxton Keys? contributions this year yeah I would uh, I would go as far to say that he's one of the better rebounders on the team um, I, I think he leads the team in rebounding um, on limited minutes and he's gained a lot of trust from from the players and the, the coaching staff in these last few games he's coming around um, uh, during the right time um, as we move forward in March so um, his versatility has been been great and um, he's improved every day Third row on the left. This one got to be for Jack. <laughs> <laughs> DeAndre, I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> As you're watching the TED talk and, and, and even going back to just watching the game itself, um, what was that experience like for you? And, and um, how many times have you, have you run over what you could have contributed had you been there? Um, I feel like in the moment I wasn't really thinking about it because I wasn't playing. Uh, but a few days after, I just thought about how I wouldn't be able to play with those guys again, uh, play with that team again. And, I mean, it kind of hurt, but, um, I mean, I don't really think about what I could have contributed to the game because, I mean, it doesn't matter. I didn't play, so just try to move on. On the right-hand side. Uh, this one's for Ty Nick Carboni from NBC Charlotte. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. <laughs> well, specifically for you, Ty, Jose Perez on Gardner Webb says he knows you a little bit from some AAU experience. Can you talk about him a little bit and how you know him and just what Gardner Webb, what jumps out on film about them? Yeah, so we actually played in the same AAU program, uh, PSA Cardinals in New York, and I played him against him um, our high schools twice, I think. Um, so I heard he's having a, a great year. Uh, I think he leads them in rebounds. Um, he posts a lot from the four position. He's been that versatile four for them. Um, passes the ball well from out of the post. Um, so I heard he's having a great year. Um, I think their versatility jumps out on film. Um, one through five, shoot, shoot the three. Um, they're a little smaller, but they all, they all attack. Um, they're balanced. Um, they have some really good athletes. They defend, they share the ball. They don't turn it over much. Um, so they're, they're a real good team. It's going to be a, a, a battle. Jack, do you want to elaborate on the, uh, anything that jumps out about Gardner Webb? <laughs> sure. Um, no, like Ty was saying, they're very versatile. They're five men, can shoot the three, um, face up, and relentless. Um, so it's going to be a good, good matchup. We're excited to play tomorrow. Fourth row in the middle. Uh, this can go to any of you guys, really. But I guess as it relates to a year ago, you have new pieces that you didn't have then, DeAndre being one, Braxton being another, Kihei being another. How much more equipped do you guys feel to play small ball this year than maybe you were defensively a year ago? We'll start with Kyle. This will be the final question, so we'll start with Kyle and let anyone else answer. Yeah, I would say that, you know, on the ball, Kihei brings something to the game that I've never played with or experienced. Um, and I'm not sure that um, full court wise, Coach Bennett's ever seen anything like this in his program. So um, he will be a, a key piece moving forward. And then, like I said, Braxton um, being able to rebound is huge. Obviously, we know what Dre brings to the table is just a little bit of everything. So, um, you know, whenever you're not playing with someone like that, your team's going to struggle a little bit. We got him healthy and back and ready to go. And, um, you know, with Braxton and Kihei. I'm just excited for them to, you know, play with this team in the tournament for the first time. So, anyone else want to add to that? Thank you, guys.
Virginia head coach Tony Bennett. Coach, please start with an opening statement, and we'll open the floor for questions. Sure. Um, yeah, obviously excited to be back here and getting ready to play. I heard the tail end of, of our guys' um, responses, and I'm sure you guys got a lot of questions for me, so I'll, I'll look forward to answering them. But um, again, thankful to be in this spot. Um, and we know how good, I'm sure you asked me, Gardner Webb is. And we're trying to prepare as well as we can and, and look forward to playing tomorrow. First question here, uh, second row in the middle. Tony, you don't always get a chance to see your incoming recruits play together before they get to college. Were you confident that Ty and Kyle would complement each other as well on the court as they have? Yeah, they're, they're smart, skilled players. And, you know, they got to play in the uh, NBA Top 100 camp. I think they played, they might have been on the same team or they, they played in that. And just watching them at AU, guys that have feel for the game and are skilled and smart um, usually, you know, gel or mesh together. Uh, and they've done that. And, you know, I think they've come in and they've added to their uh, physical. Uh, Coach Curtis has done a great job. They've gotten stronger and more athletic. But, um, again, the way they play the ball and, and the way they are was, you know, can we get them ready defensively? And they've even taken steps in that area. So no question they've, uh, they have that. Midway back on the right-hand side. Carboni from NBC Charlotte. Some of your players describe Gardner Webb's style as relentless and balanced. What jumps out to you? Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. Um, well coached. Uh, Tim does a great job. But, you know, teams that have fours and fives that can, well, all the players that can shoot the three, uh, multiple actions, great spacing of the floor, very good numbers offensively and defensively. Uh, just they're, they're good. I, you know, they beat two ACC opponents on the road. Um, and, uh, one of the ACC assistants just called me and said, they're very good. You've got to be ready because they can play. And, of course, we're going to be ready. We understand that. When you get into this tournament, everybody can play. So I think just their, their balance, their ability to stretch the floor, the, the actions that they run. And then, um, again, it's, you know, what DJ did in the championship game um, was amazing. But they have multiple um, players to attack and score and play that way. Back right corner. Tony, hi. Uh, David DeGuzman, WFXR in Roanoke. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Richie McKay, uh, your former assistant, obviously Liberty, in the tournament for the first time since 2013. What stood out to you about your time with him as an assistant and how impressed are you with how he's been able to turn around the program to get to the NCAA tournament? Yeah, well, he did a great job when he was there the first time. And uh, Richie was such a, a blessing for me to come in. You know, he was a friend from way back, uh, head coaching experience. And had a, you know, I think he had been in um, the Virginia area for I don't know how many years exactly when I took the job, but um, excellent recruiter, uh, understands the game, uh, high level offensively, great mind, and um, just who he is. You know, you you have to when you go through these <laughs> rebuilding programs or the the rigors of just seasons, you want people that uh, you always say are, are with you irregardless and you trust them and, and that, that was built in because of our relationship before because of who he is um, and then I you know hopefully he helped our program hopefully he gained some things but he's taken that that job and he's got very good players they play a sound system they are defending well um, he's got them doing good stuff offensively so I'm really happy to see the success that he had and, and coach Susie's there uh, who was with us as well Middle uh, Co coach. Coach Joe Wayne, that's with the Richmond Times Dispatch. Um, over the course of the season, how do you make sure the guys are sort of mentally where they need to be uh, at this point of the year? Can, can it feel, the regular season kind of feel long at times? And if so, how do you make sure that this time of the year they're kind of at their best uh, going into tournament play? Yeah, that's, you're always trying to, you know, the teams that can um, advance are the teams that are healthy, that are playing their best basketball and are fresh. Um, the season is, is challenging, it's long, so, you know, you, you always look at the season and say, how can we try to peak at the right time, play our best basketball? And when you're in a league like the ACC, um, we always use the term, it'll check you for leaks. <laughs> if you got any leaks, it'll show up. So you just have to be ready every time out. And, um, you know, you're hopeful at that competition. If there's something that's off, it'll show, and then you address it to work at it. And then, again, just prepare the right way. Uh, that, that's all you can do. You know, I, I told our guys, um, you know, they're going to get so many questions, I'm sure, about last year. And um, I said, here's the deal. I said, you, you respect your opponent, which is easy to do because they're, they're very good. You respect the game. You prepare well and then get yourself in the moment 
and go out and play. That's, that's what you can control. And again, you try to get your team playing the best basketball, but um, that's the reality of it. So, you know, hopefully we're in a good spot and ready to play. Coach, back row in the middle. Will Pelagic, South Carolina Radio Network. Tony, uh, dovetailing off of that, your players talked about channeling last year's disappointment properly. What constitutes during that, and how do you prepare them just having dealt with that for this stage now? Yeah, you know, that's everybody processes things or internalizes things differently. Um, but, you know, in, in all of your experiences, when you go through um, a relatively hard thing, those are the things that can really shape you, as we always talk about, if you learn to use them right. So that was something that we, you know, we've talked about as a team and certainly have, have dealt with it and we've said we've owned that. And, um, and I think that's, you know, just use it in the right way. You don't stay in it forever, but you grow from all those things, but especially that, and then attack this year. Now, we talked about running to the starting line. You know, that was kind of a theme we talked about to, to this year and playing in the best way, and certainly there's motivation from all the experiences that have happened in the past, but uh, I, I think it's, it's the ability, as I said, to prepare well and uh, be in the moment now and um, be as good as you can and know you're going to be uh, – it's, it's a new year, and it's kind of that idea of pressing on, pressing on. Coach, front row. Uh, uh, Paul, Woody, Russian Time Dispatch, uh, Coach Bennett. Um, the players were talking about a TED Talk that they, they watched. Um, they, uh, do you, was that your idea, and do you re remember who the, gave the talk and what the point of the whole exercise was? Yeah, it, it was – if you've ever watched TED Talks, they're, they're very uh, – I think they're inspirational. This was one just um, – actually, it was done in Charlottesville, a guy named uh, – well, it was called Joe the Storyteller. And it was just, uh, he had gone through or had, had witnessed uh, something, a, a hard thing. This was at the start of the year we showed it. And it was, uh, it was just, it was powerful. It was a unique, I thought, TED Talk that really spoke to the situation at hand. And, and it's really just, there's so many things guys take from it, but the ability to learn to use um, things that happen in your life in the right way because um, there's just a quote, and I, I think I shared it at ACC Media Day that if you learn to use it right, it can buy you a ticket to a place uh, that you couldn't have gone any other way. You know, talking about a hard experience. And, and that was kind of the idea about that. And, um, you know, I, that's, that's the reality of, of uh, the talk and the guys. And, you know, we've, we've used that and shared that and say, in anything, what can we learn from this? Are we thankful for what we learn, whether it's a tough loss, a great win, or a situation like last year? Um, the ability to, to grow from that and respond in the right way. Coach, third row in the middle. Coach, Wes McElroy, Sports Radio 910, hey, Fan Richmond. You can show guys and you can talk to them about certain things, but what most impressed you, the message that you gave them last year after that loss and the things that you told them in the offseason, what's most impressed your – most caught your attention, impressed you during the regular season about the growth and maturity of this team? Yeah, you know, you just um, – as I said, the league is good. You just – you got to step in the moment and play, and I thought the guy's consistency. You know that a conference season or a season is is about the consistency of your team on the road at home over two and a half months or you know 18 games in the ACC, and that's a challenge. Now that's a different kind of challenge than the NCAA tournament. The NCAA tournament or ACC is the one and done, but I, I marvel that how they they found ways, they rallied, and they were at a very consistent level for the most part and. That doesn't always happen um, when you're in a league, any league really, because um, usually there's a, some drop-offs or dips and, and certainly that's possible. But how they did that, you know, what was our record in conference? We were six, what were we? 16 and two, right? <laughs> yes, okay, going back. Um, to be able to do that um, over that consistent time, that, that impressed me. And they, they really, you know, played together. I think their versatility was important, but, um, and they all improved in the off season. So I think that, that always stands out to me that uh, over that course of time, that I think that's kind of what you're asking, where I, I step back and say, hard to do, and they did it, and, and well done. In the back right. Hey, Tony. Allison Williams, hey, Allison. Um Curious if you could just speak to the impact of having DeAndre this year in the mm -hmm. tournament, his versatility and what he brings, and the difference it will be having him. Yeah, I th yeah, DeAndre has had a heck of a year. He's improved. You said it, his versatility, you know, defensively, we've used him at times to guard ones, twos, threes, and fours. Um, 
and that that can be helpful. You know, you you have to the way the game is going with you know fours and fives now that are playing just like guards and separating. You need mobility and quickness to be able to hopefully guard guys like that well. And then you know, offensively, we've used DeAndre on the some on the perimeter and some as kind of a stretch four, and he's been able at times to certainly manufacture some shots, shot making ability. Those things I think are really important and you have to account for him on the offensive end and you know, he's scoring the post some. He's just versatile really in both both ways. So and you know at six seven or six eight with the long wingspan, just his dimensions are good. So just a, a high quality player obviously and I think that um, anytime you can have a versatile player that can play some four, four or three, that makes a I think that is what was uh, helped us last year and has, has helped us again this year among other things. Coach, second row on the right. Ron Counts from Daily Progress. Coach, uh, Jack talked about last year as a guy who can score on the outside and on the inside. Whether it's Jack defending him or someone else, what's the key to defending a versatile big like that? Uh, say that, what was the first part? Uh, Jack. Jack mentioned Lasseter as a guy who can score oh, on Lasseter, the perimeter. Sorry. Yeah, I yeah, said last can, year. I was scared last year. Yes. <laughs> he can score on the perimeter and the paint. What's yeah. the key to the defending a versatile He's, big like that? You have to be really good individually on him, and then collectively as a team. It can't be one man just stopping him because what he, you know what he did in the, the tournament and, and all, he's playing his best basketball now, but it's not just him. You say, okay, well, we can just lock into him. They have so many other quality players that can score, and they're efficient, but um, you have to – they do a lot of good stuff with ball screens. You got to be, be able to stop the ball and quick to him as a shooter, and then be able to spread out, and because um, he he drives well. And again, inside outside, I think he's shooting in over 40 from three. Uh, their team's shooting almost 40 percent, so uh, it puts pressure and a challenge on you. But very alert and very ready and, and quick to him because of his ability to play outside and inside as their five a lot of times. Coach, back right corner. Hey Tony. Dan Wolk in USA Today. Um, yeah. I've seen you after some tough losses. You seem to have this incredible calm about you in those tough, in the toughest moments probably of your career. Is that a conscious choice for you to, to, to act that way, to comport yourself that way, or is that just something that, that comes naturally to you? And when you're ever in private, do you ever go somewhere and scream or something <laughs> like that? Punch the pillow. I used, to, I used to do that when I played for my dad. When he'd yell at me, I'd like go to the dorm and we'd always say, all right, this is a pillow. And we'd say, pretend as he's chewed us out. So, of course you do. Um, I'm, I've been, um, I'm thankful for the things. That you certainly feel things, things bother you, but where does peace and perspective come from? And I always tell our guys, um, it's, it's got to be something that is unconditional. And I know I have that in the love of my family. Um, unconditional acceptance and love, that's huge. And I know I have that in my faith in Christ. That's for me where I draw my strength from, my, my peace, my steadiness in the midst of things. Um, but of course you feel things. Of course you, you desperately want things to go well and it's frustrating when you're not. And, and you step back and look at it. But I think I always challenge our guys, what's your secret of contentment? What's your secret of contentment? Because there's going to be times it talks about you're going to be well fed and living in plenty, and there's going to be times where you're going to be starving and living in want. Um, what's your secret of handling that? And that I know without a doubt, those of us who have parents or kids that, that love you, give them unconditionally, or if, if the, your faith is there, that has to buoy you, and that has to be your center. And you dwell on what is good because there is a bigger picture to all this, and I, I believe I understand that. So, you know, going through those refining moments, whew, they're tough, but you look back at them in a way they're sometimes painful gifts that draw you nearer to what, what truly matters. And I think that's, that would be the best way I could respond to that. We're out of time, uh, so we have to end. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.